Today we take a slight departure away from global politics, and today we're speaking with Professor Joseph Yusinski of the University of Miami. Professor Yusinski is an American political scientist specializing in the study of conspiracy theories, and most notably American conspiracy theories. His most recent book is American Conspiracy Theories, published by Oxford, and he was made a fellow of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry in 2020. We speak about conspiracy theories, most notably American conspiracy theories, why we believe them, how these proliferate through the American political system, and how we should uh, think about conspiracy theories when we read about them and when they're reported uh, in the media. All right, Professor, thank you so much for joining today. I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I just wanted to jump right in. I know we've had uh, a little bit of email correspondence over the last a uh, couple of weeks. I was very interested in um, your research as a, a political scientist. You're at the University of Miami, um, and your field of expertise happens to be in um, conspiracy theory. So uh, I really wanted to get a chance to speak with you and kind of find out um, what's going on with conspiracy theories, um, not only American conspiracy theories, but um, maybe even ones that uh, you might know of or or can identify in, your, in some of your research or others' research uh, that happen um, globally. So um, thank you again for joining. Um, and I guess the, my, my, my first main question was, uh, unless you wanted to, to introduce anything um, uh, about yourself or, or, or say anything about your, your, your uh, current research. Um, I'm Joe Yuzinski. I'm a professor at University of Miami. I study conspiracy theories and have been doing so for about a decade. And most of what I do now involves polling uh, oh, mostly cool. Americans about what conspiracy theories they believe. And then I try to use that data to figure out why people believe what they believe. That's fascinating. I'm very uh, interested to hear about that. So what is the academic definition of conspiracy theory? What qualifies as conspiracy theory? Because the term is thrown around constantly, I'm sure. Um, how, how, do we, how should we best understand that as critical thinkers uh, and, and critical reason, re reason people that have been born after the Enlightenment? Well, I don't think there's one academic definition. I think that the term carries a lot of baggage Right. Nobody likes to be told that their theory is a conspiracy theory because they think their theory is a conspiracy fact. Right. Right. So oftentimes when you have arguments with conspiracy theorists, it will come down to them stamping their foot and saying what they believe is true or at least rational. Um, and they don't want it denigrated with that term. But in everything I write, I always try to define the term up front so it's clear what I mean. And sure. by the term conspiracy theory, I don't mean irrational or crazy or necessarily false. What I mean is that you're asserting a conspiracy and that assertion has yet to be found true or likely to be true by the appropriate uh, knowledge generating institutions with open data and evidence. So it could be true, but we don't have great reason to think that it is yet, right? And by conspiracy in this sense, I'm not talking about legal definitions of conspiracy, sure. like, oh, two guys try to knock over the 7-Eleven or something like that. What I'm talking about are small groups working in secret for their own benefit against the common good and in a way that undermines our bedrock ground rules against the widespread use of force and fraud. So people conspiring in the legal sense to rob a bank or to have somebody popped or something like that, that's right. I don't care about that. What I care about are much bigger schemes that undermine the way things should run. Right. So what are maybe what what are some of the more popular ones? I mean, I'm sure people will, could probably I, the, most common Americans, I imagine, would probably have can count a few on their on, on their on their hand. Right. So what are some of the popular ones? What are the ones you like to focus on? And maybe what are some of the newest ones, even outside of QAnon? And I'd love to talk about um, QAnon and, and, and kind of how that's um, proliferated through American society. But um, yeah, what are some of the what are some of the ones that you're talking about? So, just before I start listing off a few, I will sure. say this: is that 
there is no us and them when it comes to people who believe conspiracy theories and people who don't. Okay. As what I find is that the more conspiracy theories I ask about on any given survey, the more people or the more conspiracy theories I ask about, the fewer people there are who don't believe at least one. Okay, so, fascinating. Yeah, so conspiracy theory is a really big bucket that has an infinite number of ideas in it. Right. People are making up new conspiracy theories all the time, and there are no official versions. This is all like fan fiction. So there are numerous versions of every conspiracy theory out there. I mean, just take Kennedy, for example. Sure. You know, it's not like there's one conspiracy version. theory about the Kennedy assassination. Everybody has a different version of who right. did it. But with that said, the more we ask about in a given survey, the, we get almost no one who believes none. So in a survey I did last year, I think I asked about 23 conspiracy theories and 90 plus percent believed at least one. So wow. imagine if I was to ask about 100 or 200 conspiracy theories, every, everyone's going to buy at least one or a few. So it's not like there are some people who just really don't believe any. As we can say, some people will believe a lot and some people will believe few most people are somewhere in the middle but it isn't like you know it's those people over there who believe them and us over here are smart or something like that now, now, you, now you famously said that conspiracy theories are for losers right does that mean that we're all are we all losers <laughs> well in the sense that i was talking about it and that they can be tools used by right. people who are losing or who are on the outside sure sure who thinks the election was rigged right the losers yeah who thinks they were cheated in the football game or the baseball game not the winners right everything was hunky-dory to them who complains and says it was rigged the losers right yeah. so what you tend to find when you look at uh conspiracy theories over time is that they often follow a pattern in terms of what's salient i mean who attracts a lot of conspiracy theories usually it's the sitting president not the right. president who lost and is vacationing somewhere. <laughs> sure. Um, so, so we tend to be concerned about power and the winning side is usually the one with the power. So there's a lot of conspiracy theories about them. And, and talking about elections more specifically, we can, you know, we know that going into an election, both sides think they're going to be cheated. But after the election, usually it's only one side that thinks that they were. Right. Yeah. So, but, 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 but anyway, so that's sort of the landscape, but then if you say, well, what are the more popular conspiracy theories? I will say in terms of popular, Kennedy is consistently popular. It started out in 1963, about a month after the assassination, you had 50% of Americans believing there was a conspiracy. By 1975, it was 80%. It stayed around there until around 2000. It's come down since. Um, but it's still polling between 40 and 55%, depending on how you ask the question. So it is, it, to me, that's the most popular American conspiracy theory consistently. Wow. We do have other ones that will rival it. Like we, recently, if I say, was Epstein killed to cover up what he knows, we're getting 50, around 50%. Wow. Uh, but we will see how much staying power that has because. A lot of people, I think, have forgotten who he is or don't know. Or is that what decreases the 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 I guess the level of belief is the is the amount of time that passes and people just stop caring. It, what, I mean, what is it worth anymore to the average person to even ha know what happened to Epstein? Is that what decreases that that, that it, those it, numbers? It, it matters, but then the question becomes: Why is something salient or not at any given time? Right. Okay. Right. So Epstein is sort of, no one's talking about him now, but we can imagine a year or two, maybe there's a trial that happens sure. for, for his friend Maxwell, and maybe that brings it back into the news, at which case the conspiracy theories might be reinvigorated. Um, so there's all sorts of things that can drive salience and that salience can drive, you know, um, people conspiracy theorizing about it. Um, but the broader answer to that question is, some conspiracy theories are around forever and they up and down others they sort of get forgotten over time it's never really clear right what what the 
I guess what you might call a decay function is for right. conspiracy theory beliefs. And it's not exactly clear that there is one. Um, I mean, there are people now who are still concerned about the Rothschilds. They don't really have a lot of power anymore. They did maybe a hundred years ago. Sure. And if you go back 150 years, you have a ton of conspiracy theories about them. Now it's much less. We're getting you know a few percentage points on our polls. Um, but Kennedy went up 10 years after the fact, plateaued for 30 years, and has only come down since. But Kennedy's in the news all the time. Sure. So who you know there isn't one one function that would describe how these things sort of get popular and then what they do after. The latest one was Kennedy, that his brother is now um, back alive. Are you familiar with this? Have no, this? but but no, but I heard Kennedy. I heard John Kennedy was back alive. Yes, and his son too. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, there's there's a I guess a faction of the QAnon folk that believe um, the Kennedy brother is is never actually died, and he's going to be um, vice president uh, with a, in a Trump administration um, this year. And there's actually shirts. <laughs> let's say Trump uh, 2021 or 2022, like, like literally politically impossible to do. Well, right? they, well they were saying that about uh, John Kennedy Jr. Yes, okay. That, okay I, I haven't sorry, heard yeah. it about Bobby Kennedy, but I'm sure somebody I, said I, it. I probably was mistaken, but yeah. Yeah, and, and, I saw, and I saw there was a Trump rally where they brought a World War II veteran, you know, up on the stage. Mm-hmm. And people were saying, oh, that's President Kennedy. He survived in 1963 and he's here at a Trump rally. Wow. So well, people can make up anything they want, anytime they want. And with social media, we can find it. <laughs> sure. So I guess, yeah, that's interesting. So how do you, for your research, how do you keep uh, on top of the latest conspiracy theories? Like, how do you find out uh, where are some of these late, like where the new ones are, are, are invented? Well, here's the thing. There's no great way to do that. Right. It could very well be the case that there are conspiracy theories more popular than anything I know about, but because I'm trapped in the ivory tower in terms of education, um, an elite separated from the masses who are, you know, spreading these theories, there's really no way for me to know. I yeah. mean, I could peck around on Twitter and see what I find, but that doesn't, you know, if I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, there's no reason I would find it. Um, I look at what journalists are covering, but they're like me, sure. right? It's not like journalists are regular folks. They're, they're, they're their own sort of uh, type of elite. So they may not be talking about the same things the regular folks are talking about. So they may be missing a lot. Um, so, you know, oftentimes I get asked this question, what's the most popular one right now? And I say, I don't know. I can only tell you what the most popular one is that I poll on, right? Because when I poll on conspiracy theories, I have to make active choices about what I'm going to ask about. Sure. So, and, and I do that, I guess, the best I can by surveying what's covered in the media, by looking around on social media, seeing what, uh, you know, people are talking about and writing about, but there's no real window for me to see into what is everyone everywhere talking about at any given time, right? Right, Because this is fan fiction. People make it up anywhere, anytime for any reason they have and share it in all sorts of different ways. And uh, your median conspiracy theory is here and gone. It's right. not getting books written about it. It's not getting newspaper articles written about it. I'm not polling on it. Um, and it's gone with the wind by tomorrow morning. Right. That's your right. median conspiracy theory. Wow. It's, okay. it's, so if you just think about the most popular ones, you're getting sort of a jaundiced eye about it because you're thinking, wow, they're all so popular. Well, only the ones we poll on, sure. which are the ones that people like me have heard about a lot, which means they're probably really popular by the time they cross my radar. So there could be all sorts of stuff people are talking about that that people like me just don't even know. Right. So what is the most popular one you've been pulling on? I mean, I guess the latest will probably be the, um, the developments around QAnon. Is that correct? No, not even close. Oh, wow. Okay. In, in fact, the opposite is true. It's I just, poll, I just polled on, last month, I just polled on 40 some odd conspiracy theories. And I think QAnon was the least believed. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's good news. Okay. So, 
All right, tell, talk to me about that. So there's good news and there's bad news. Oh, um, okay. And, and there's bad news. So the first bad <laughs> news is that the media is terrible at reporting this. And yeah. they've been saying for about a year and a half that QAnon is big and getting bigger. Um, and it's gone mainstream. And okay. that's never really been based on any good evidence. They saw someone with a t-shirt, so it's gone mainstream. They sure. saw somebody's tweet, it's gone mainstream. Um, and even if you take the reporting at face value, it doesn't make sense because they say things like, it's a far right conspiracy theory that's gone mainstream. That doesn't make any sense. How can it be right. both far right and mainstream at the sure. same time? What is it? So, so the reporting on its own was nonsense. And uh, <laughs> even more importantly, they were making these assertions based on nothing. But there were polls out there saying as much. Like I've been polling on QAnon since 2018 publishing this in the Washington Post a couple of times saying it's not well liked and it's not well known. Um, journalists wanted to ignore it. Um, um, Emerson uh, Polling did a poll in 2019, came in at 5% and it was equally believe, believed between Republicans and Democrats, ignored. Uh, Pew did a poll at the beginning of 2020. Only 3% of the country knew a lot about it. About 20% knew a little bit. But of everyone who had heard about it, most of them heard about it through NPR or the New York Times, not from 8chan <laughs> or wherever. Sure. So these were believers. So most of the knowledge about it was coming through mainstream media sources reporting on it, not from organic growth, right? And I, I've continued polling on it, and it's consistently showing up between 5 and 8%. In my most recent poll, I think it was 5.9% of people I polled in the country said that they are believers in QAnon. So that makes it one of the least believed things that I poll on, typically. Now, that's the good news. Okay. So the bad news <laughs> is the media got it wrong a lot. Right. Um, and there are some pollsters who got it wrong too, where they ask questions like, do you believe in massive sex trafficking rings run by the government? Or do you believe in satanic cults running child trafficking rings or something? And you can get between 25 and 30% of Americans saying yes to those things. But those beliefs have been around for a long, long time. Right. And we're only starting to pay attention to them now because of QAnon, but you and I probably lived through these satanic panics of the 80s and 90s. Yes. These beliefs were out there. Right. And, and, and we often only pay attention to mainstream political opinion. But there's a whole bunch of people out there who aren't listening to what their Congress people say, don't really care what the news says, and they have their own views about how the world works. And, and those views involve really corrupt governments, satanic cults running around everywhere, all sorts of stuff going on. Um, and those people have been around forever. In fact, pretty much most of what QAnon talks about are just ideas that QAnon adopted. They're not really anything new to them. Right. It's Even probably the, a lot of conspiracy ideas are now placed under the umbrella of QAnon. Yeah. When QAnon, all they did, all QAnon did was pull in people who were conspiracy minded and sort of adopt what they already thought anyway. Sure. Right. Um, I mean, the idea that there's a pedophile deep state working against the president is not new to QAnon. That's the plot of Oliver Stone's JFK movie that came out 30 years ago. So there's nothing new. Yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. very few things that are new. Yeah. And, but it's, it's a really tiny amount of people who are like, yeah, I think there's a secret agent on 8chan giving me clues about the battle between the satanic deep state and Trump. <laughs> so that's not really growing. Right. But when you ask about other more broad conspiracy theories, yes, you can find a good chunk of people who believe in it. And you can always do that. Sure. And that's sort that part is sort of the bad news. Bad for pollsters who have sort of polled about QAnon conspiracy theories um, and equated belief in any conspiracy theory also believed by QAnon, equating that with belief in QAnon directly. Those are different things, right? Right, and um, so that's been one problem. And then the and then I guess the the bad news for society is yeah, there's a lot of people out there, sometimes double digits, percentages believing all sorts of crazy nonsense. Yeah, what are you gonna do? I mean, and that's that's nothing new. There's nothing new there. 
Right. And I guess, too, like a criticism to the media when you were talking about the media not reporting on this very well or not accurately. Um, and because we don't know really much of the uh, um, details around the January 6th uprising, um, I imagine that many of those people who were, who were in the media who were reporting on the QAnon issue were now uh, confirmed in their convictions that uh, they had gotten it right since they, I guess, um, consider everybody who was a part of uh, that, um, that the capital right, uprising were um, inspired by QAnon. Would you agree? I think a lot of them think that, but that's not what the evidence shows. I mean, sure. some people were clearly QAnon. Yeah. Some people were just supporting Trump. Some people were more about whatever militia they belonged to. Some people were white, white nationalists or whatever. Right. Um, but there was a whole hodgepodge of people there. And, and I don't think there's any way we can know if, if all of them or how many of them right. subscribe to QAnon. Um, but I mean, there were certainly some. Yeah. But sure. so what? You, right. you can't extrapolate from a group of people who showed up at the Capitol on one day to, you know, what is public opinion like across 330 million people? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think yeah, so most of your research is about Americans and American conspiracy theories. Do you, do you have research or do you know if there's research that exists on global conspiracy theories or maybe even what Americans uh, have you polled Americans on global conspiracy theories? Maybe what are some of the global conspiracy theories? Do you have any uh, background with that? So th there's lots of global stuff in the sense that if people think that there is some group working against us, often it's an international group. Right. So this is the UN's plot to get us. This is the World Bank, or this is, they might call it the Illuminati or the Freemasons, but some sort of international organization that's trying to take away our sovereignty um, one way or another. And you can see this pop up in all different places, right? Okay. Yeah. Like land, like zoning policies, you know, you'll have a meeting on it in the local town and there'll be people showing up. This is part of the, the Agenda 21. Order. Uh -huh, yeah, see, right. This is a communist takeover or, uh, you know, bike sharing policies at the municipal level. This is part of a uh, communist whatever. And the, the globalists are coming for us. Right. right. So so all, all those things are out there and it just naturally makes sense. If you're going to say, I think there's a powerful group out to get us. Sometimes you're going to think it's an international group. I mean, there are conspiracy theories specific to the U.S. that spread all over the world. I mean, you can find double digits of people in other countries that think Kennedy was assassinated by a conspiracy in Europe. Um, you know, 5% of Americans tend to think the moon landing was faked, but you get close to 20% of the French who think we faked it. Uh, wow, really? Wait, wait, repeat that? So 10% of Americans... Uh... So, so usually less than 10%. I, I usually get 5 6% think the moon landing was faked, but it's closer okay. to 20 in France that think wow. that we faked why, it. Why France? Why is that? I don't know. Well, it's the only place I've seen data on it from. Oh, I see. Sure. Okay. But here's the thing. If you're an American, we did that. That's a point of national pride. Got it. I see. Right. Okay. If you're a French, then you're like, yeah, they faked it. <laughs> those, right. those, those Americans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, what are some of the, do you, what are some of the other stats or, or data on, on some of these conspiracy theories that would be, um, that would be kind of shocking to know about? Uh, well, besides everyone probably believes one or a few and some can attract majority support, um, there's conspiracy theories about everything. Sure. Lots of different versions about each. And it's not just conspiracy theories about the big event or whatever. Um, there are conspiracy theories about big events, small events, medium events. It's if people have a worldview in which conspiracies dictate events and circumstances, then any event or circumstance they're thinking about, they're going to say, well, it's probably a conspiracy behind it. It just makes sense to them. So, um, I mean, to me, that's sort of the good news and the bad news. It's stable, but it's, but it's prevalent. It's not going up, even though everyone is freaking out thinking that it's going up. Uh, the so social media has not ushered in a new age of conspiracy theorizing. Um, even though everyone's running around saying it has, it hasn't. 
I mm -hmm. mean, I in my latest survey, I re-polled, I think, 40 some odd conspiracy theories that have been polled at various times in the last 50 years. I barely found any increases. I think out of out of I think in total in my study, I had close to 50 conspiracy theories, and I think less than 15 showed. And the increases weren't particularly big, but more than that showed decreases. Wow. So, so it's not the case that we are living in the golden age of conspiracy theory. Right. They're probably just spread faster. Do you think, is that a safe conclusion? Or, I mean, is, it, the, or is the broad conclusion that regardless of what technology is given at any certain time within human uh, existence, we pretty much maintain the same levels of belief in some of the, in some of these conspiracy theories. Yeah, it's a, it's a human phenomenon. Right. And it, it exists no matter what communication technology we're using. And, and oftentimes we're talking about spread as if that's the only way someone can adopt a belief and that if it does spread, that means people are adopting it. Right. But people can see stuff on social media and not believe it. Sure. Like journalists call me all the time. They say, did theory on Twitter? And I say, yeah. I say, what's the problem? And they say, well, it's going to spread everywhere and everyone's going to believe it. And I say, well, did you see it? And they say, yeah. And they say, so you must believe it. And they say, no. And I say, right. what makes you so special? What magic power do you have that makes you better than everyone else? Right. And, and at that point, they start to realize, well, if people aren't really prone to buying into something, they're not going to seek it out. And if it does get into their feed, they're not going to buy into it. Right. So with all conspiracy theories, we find clear patterns that if they're not disposed to conspiracy theorizing in the first place, they're not really buying in. And if the conspiracy theory touches on something partisan or political or having to do with various groups that they may or may not belong to, they tend to believe ones that accuse groups they don't belong to. Right. <laughs> it's always the other group They're, that's out to get us, the not opposition. the other way around. Sure. So people are, are very finicky with whether they believe conspiracy theories and then which ones. So... It's not, it's not the case that it's like something gets on Twitter and everyone believes it. Your media and conspiracy theory on Twitter is there and gone. Right. You mentioned that um, in some of the polling that you've done, you found that most people at least believe one conspiracy theory. Did you run across um, someone you might have considered to be like very rational, probably just would have, you know, thrown most of these into the trash and then there was one that kind of stood out among um, uh, many, many folks uh, that that um, that they had a belief in. Well, Kennedy. Kennedy is the big the one. one. Yeah. Right. And it's just sort of like, well, I don't believe conspiracy theories. Then you bring up Kennedy. But, something and like, with but, Kennedy. but there was something off there. Right. And it's like, all right, it's fine. I, you know, but um, you don't get to say you're not a conspiracy theorist and then pick a few. <laughs> sure. You know, right, if conspiracy right. theorist means anyone who believes any conspiracy theory, then then they fall in the category. Um, what I have tended to see in the last few years is that people will throw all sorts of stuff at the wall. And then no matter what happens later, they claim they're right all along. Right. So it's sort of like playing tennis without a net. Like, sure. like during the Trump Russia investigation, you had people saying, you know, Trump is a Russian agent. He's been one for 40 years. Uh, They're making all sorts of fantastic claims about Trump's supposed dealings with Russia. Right. There was compromising information. There was P-tapes. There was this, that, and the other thing. And it's all going to come crashing down they, they, There was a television show about the P-tapes, and the, none, none, none of the P-tapes were actually shown. Yeah, and... Damn it, so, I watched every, all eight episodes of that. <laughs> not, as, not nary a P uh, occurred. <laughs> well, you're on the wrong website then, <laughs> so if that's what you want to see. So, but, but, but here's the thing is that every, there are all sorts of hypotheses and theories going around about what they were eventually going to find with Trump. And they found some things, but it wasn't as fantastic. Right. And many of the claims that had been made in the two years prior just were, did not hold up to scrutiny and did not find any evidence. But everybody found something to hang their hat on and everyone was right all along, no matter what they had said. Right. Right. And that's that's what I tend to see 
um, lately is people can always morph their theories to whatever the new finding is. And, and, and they don't hold themselves accountable for being so wrong about so many things um, when they're engaging in it. Sure. How did you get started in this research? I mean, what was it that, that kicked it off for you? Was it, was it you looking around as, a, as a, uh, a political scientist and just noticing, wow, everybody who I considered <laughs> uh, rational and intelligent um, also happens to believe in a very interesting uh, bogus theory about something? No, I would like to say that I had some inkling that this would be a neat topic to get into, but I didn't. It's just uh -huh. I had a co-author at University of Miami who said, hey, let's do this thing. And I said, no. Oh, I, really? said that, I said, that's stupid. There's no political aspect to this. No one's going to care about it. Even right. worse, there's no data out there. There's very little data. And I said, you know, th this, is, this is a clunker. You know, and and he badgered me for a little bit, and eventually I wrote a book with him. So um, he was right, and I was wrong on that front. Um, but we couldn't have known at the time, sure, because once Trump gets into the race, conspiracy theories become a massive topic. I was running a Google alert on the term conspiracy theory starting in like 2010 or 2011. And I get back three or four stories a night with the term conspiracy theory in it, none on the weekends. After 2015, it was between 50 and 100 stories every night um, and on the weekends. And that has not slowed down. I mean, I have, t I mean, just speaking for myself, I think I took 300 interview requests during wow. the pandemic. Yeah. And that's, that's insane for any professor to get that amount of calls, but it was all about conspiracy theories. Right. Because it's something we're all paying attention to and we see it as politically meaningful. A lot of that having to do with Trump. Right. Um, so it, the landscape has sort of changed, but we need to keep in mind some important things. The fact that the media is covering it more doesn't mean people believe it more. Right. And the fact that Trump and other politicians engage in conspiratorial rhetoric doesn't mean that we believe it more. It just means that um, elites are paying more attention, particularly in the media, and that our political elites, like Trump, um, have seen that conspiracy theories can be useful tools for reaching out to certain constituencies. Right. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating. It's a it's a it's a great nuanced um, perspective that I think uh, people probably um, don't want to hear, but should. Right? I mean, think about when Trump got into the race. Sure. He had no real constituency. He had name recognition, but it wasn't like he had governing experience or could claim to be a real conservative or stuck by Republican values. Right. He didn't have he the, the normal things you would run with on a Republican primary campaign. He did not have. Mm -hmm. So he had to change the game. So he said politics is a swamp. It needs to be drained. And oh, yeah, Jeb Bush, you have eight years as, as a successful governor. Well, that just means you're eight years more corrupt than me. Right. So if it, it flipped the game on his competitors and he. You could find, I mean, when we were polling back then, you could find differences between the Republicans supporting Trump and the ones supporting Jeb and Kasich and the other, the, uh, the other candidates. They were appealing to different constituencies. Sure. Just like Bernie was appealing to a different constituency than Hillary Clinton. There was obviously some overlap, but um, they were giving different messages to attract different sorts of people. Um, and Trump was able to, to get this coalition of people who just may not have liked politics as a whole. Right. And may have cared a little bit less about the Republican Party and conservatism as we normally think of it and cared more about, I'm mad at the system. I think it's corrupt. I want to, you know, tear things down. Um, and I want a strong man ruler to fight back against all this corruption I see. And that's essentially what he did. Um, he gave that message and he attracted those people. And when they brought him to the prom, he continued to dance with them. Now, in terms of American politics, do you think that um, 
the QAnon and well, just everything that Trump did, as, as, as you said, um, is this going to set a precedent for maybe one party leaning on conspiracy theories more than the other? Do you see that occurring? Do you think the G GOP will be more prone to um, invite or play with conspiracy theories more than, say, the Democratic Party or or? I think the Republican Party is sort of stuck with Trump's coalition for now. Mm -hmm. And I mean, what Trump did, anyone can do, right? It will work better if you actually are an outsider and there you have some cred to your message, right? Jeb Bush can't come out and say, DC's a swamp. <laughs> right, right. I mean, he's... he's Political royalty, right? I think that's so, gonna that's probably going to happen though, and then people they'll be laughed at, correct? Like, yeah, you, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're I mean, gonna try to play that game. When when mainstream politicians use conspiracy theories, they're often laughed at. When Hillary Clinton said, "My husband's troubles are due to a vast right wing conspiracy," right, that right. became a coffee mug. So I totally forgot about that. Yeah, no, that's right. Um, when Barack uh, Obama started his reelection campaign with secretive oil billionaires are out to get the president, that hit the ground with a thud. Right, because he's a mainstream guy, right. and that doesn't really work. Um, but for Trump, it worked because he was indeed a political outsider with no experience. Right. So, um, but Trump's coalition is still there. Whatever infrastructure is there, someone else may want to take advantage of, and they, you know, somebody like a DeSantis or whoever may want to run a similar campaign with similar rhetoric. It doesn't have to be the same thing, but he can put out um, certain messages that 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 Trump voters would have really liked, right? Right. He doesn't have to go all in, but those people are there regardless. And I, you know, you may have strategic politicians who are going to want to do something to pull them into their into their coalition rather than leave sure. them up for grabs for someone else. But right. it goes on the Democratic Party too. I mean, Bernie Sanders. Um, you know, people on the left don't like it when I say it, but yeah, he has his conspiracy theory and it's just one conspiracy theory. It's the one percent controls everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is, there is maybe not control, but there is some sort of, and I mean, we probably don't want to go off into this sort of argument, but I mean, there is some sort of, um, uh, just sheer by sheer economic numbers there's some truth to that. Right. So, well, there's in, truth to, in terms of who, who's financially dominating well, rich people are rich, right. poor people are not. <laughs> Inequality exists. We should sure. probably do something about it. Right. And um, um, we can also say that richer people, not necessarily just the 1%, but richer right. people with more means have, have more ability to affect government and more access. Right. I mean, I have more access than a lot of people, but I'm not in the 1%. Sure. Right. And and to say that the one percent controls everything, like he says often, if you take the language at what it is, I see what you're saying. Space right. value, <laughs> you're, you're in conspiracy theory territory. And he, and he does it in a way that, you know, so so out of one side of his mouth, he'll say, well, they're running a rigged system. Heads, they win. Tails, you lose. And on the other side of his mouth, he says um, they're free market gamblers. Well, which is it? Are they free market gamblers or did they rig the entire system? And because you get the sort of mushiness and things that can't exist together, um, he doesn't have a clear vision of who the 1% is, what they right. want, right. how they're achieving it. And, and there's a lot of careful studies on this, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes the rich are more likely to get their way, but sometimes not. Sure. Sometimes it's just, rich people in one party get the way because the party's getting the way. Right. Um, but I mean, if you hang out with rich people, what do they say? I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't have any control over this. Who right. knows what's going on? Sure. So. Yeah. Interesting. I, I it, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. I, I, it just seems to me just on high, in a hypothesis, it would seem, it seems to me that the GOP would be more prone to, to, to use these, especially after, all of this with Trump. It's almost as if they're kind of expected to. Um, but again, who knows? I don't know. That's just uh, my initial thought. Um, I mean, it, it, he, so what my data shows is that this disposition is, is largely equal between both parties. Mm -hmm. 
So conspiracy minded people are there in both coalitions for any politician who wants to reach out to them. Right. So, it, it, you know, Trump took advantage of it in a way we haven't seen any mainstream politician do in recent years. Right. So that is sort of the scary part is that we place a lot of trust in the establishment mainstream politicians to act like establishment mainstream politicians. And we expect parties to do their job of weeding out these outsiders with, with crazy ideas. Sure. But they didn't do that this time with Trump. And I mean, to me, one thing I think the parties need to do is to have some sort of limit on who they're going to allow to run for president. Trump was barely a Republican. You mean, you mean in terms of the nomination process? Yeah, I mean, why does the Republican Party have to let anyone run under, under its banner? Same thing with Democrats. Why was Marianne Williamson on any <laughs> debate stage? That should not have been the case her, for a major party. Power crystals and stuff. <laughs> if she, I mean, I have no problem with her running for president and I have no problem with her winning if a majority of people want her to be president. Good Lord, I would. <laughs> but, well, democracy, you get what you get. But no, here's I the know. thing, the I, parties, I, I, the, the parties do not have to give these people a platform. Sure. And, and I think the parties ought to find a way to tighten up and say, well, we will allow you to run under our banner if you can meet some sort of criteria. You have some number of years of governing experience you, you, in some, some way, right? But, but to say, you know, anyone could show up and be on a debate stage. That's th that sort of undercuts a lot of what we expect parties to do. We expect parties to sort of limit the range of choices so that when we get to the ballot, there's something coherent there. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. Um, can you tell me, and I, I don't know if you're interested in this at all, but um, I guess, are you, are you focused at all on, on educating um, people on how to spot conspiracy theories or maybe even how to debunk them when, once they're spotted? Is that important? Um, to me, it's not what I do. There are people who do that sure. much better than I could. And, and a lot of people assume that I debunk them, mm -hmm. um, but I, I really don't. I mean, I don't go and investigate all the evidence for the Kennedy assassination or whatnot. Right. To me, I have a, a fairly simple rule is that um, I believe something when you have the, the correct knowledge generating institutions investigate something, come out with open data and evidence and say, this is what um, our consensus is. Right. And if anyone wants to refute it, they can do so. And maybe the consensus will change. Um, but to me, it's sort of like if someone comes up with a conspiracy theory about something, I have no way of studying that. I'm not an expert in anything other than why people believe conspiracy theories. Sure. So if someone says, I think that 9-11 uh, was an inside job and I've got this you know, theory about jet fuel not melting steel, or I don't know anything about jet fuel or steel or buildings or architecture or anything, I'm not one to debunk it. Right, right. I'm not even one to evaluate any of that argument. All yeah. I can say is, well, there have been a lot of experts um, who I trust who with open data and evidence have come to this conclusion and therefore I'm going to go with them. Right. And that's yeah. it. So I don't, so, so I don't think we even need to get to the point where we debunk this stuff. We just need to get to the point where we say, I'm not going to believe everything that I hear. Sure. I'm not going to believe everything I hear that I like, and I'm going to listen to experts when those experts are the appropriate ones and they have open data and evidence that can be refuted and changed over time if need be. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a great conclusion, I think. I, I really do appreciate you coming on. Um, do you want to give people your social media, plug your books, uh, anything like that before we yeah, sign so off? I, or anything else you'd like to say before we end? Yeah, I'm on Twitter. I'm at Joe Yuzinski and um, or joeyuzinski.com. So uh, I tweet a little. 
Awesome. People can find everything there and I'll put um, all those links down in the description. Professor, I appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. And um, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm happy to keep in touch if more conspiracy theories develop, especially in um, new cycles of, of the American political system. I'm happy to uh, continue the discussion with you. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Thanks so much. Cheers. Bye.